Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. This time we're going to set up a DHCP service on the Raspberry Pi. There's a multitude of reasons why you'd need this. Either you're testing something out in the lab, you've got a device, uh, so we say an older laser printer that doesn't seem to be working with DHCP properly. This way you can put it in a test situation and you've got it isolated off your production network. So at this point we've already got uh, the Raspberry Pi up and running. We've got the updates installed for apt-get. So now we'll do sudo apt-get install isc-dhcp server. And it'll take it just a little bit to run here. Now there's several things that we'll need to do as a part of this. Once we get uh, this up and running, we're going to uh, get the static address assigned to the card. Then we'll restart the network port, and you can either just unplug and replug, or you should uh, you can do one of the the sequences here of getting that happen. And there's some other posts on my website. That where I go over this, if it's not a process that you're familiar with, then we will get a configuration set up so that your subdeck declaration is, I guess, one word of, of, of referencing it by to get that uh, ready to go. And then once we do that, uh, then I will unplug uh, the switch that I'm on from my lab network. And then we'll plug a cable into the MacBook that I'm using to do this with after I have turned off the wireless card. Then it'll be just a matter of seeing that the Raspberry Pi is using the correct uh, internal address. And then the MacBook should get its information uh, rather quickly. Now you may have to, depending on whether it's a MacBook or Windows machine, you may have to do a manual DHCP renewal process but that's you know that's all that you should really uh, have to do and we're getting close to uh, be ready to continue on with this journey that we're on now you will see this error out the first time that you have this up and running and that's simple because it doesn't know what uh, what is to look for. So if we go through, once we get the command prompt up, I'll show you the message because this is not really uh, a good indication of where the problem is. It just tells you start failed. It doesn't really tell you why. So once we get the command prompt back, then I will be able to go into one of two message files, which generally should tell you what's where the problem is. So we'll do a tail of var log messages okay now this would make you think that it's working the way it should and it really isn't so we'll do var log syslog now there's where the real problem is okay yeah it told you just like the other one did that it wrote zero leases to the file but it's telling you it doesn't have a subnet declaration for this range which is right we're going to move it to a different range and then it's not configured to listen on any interfaces. So the first thing we need to go do is we need to edit using sudo and then nano and then forward slash etc forward slash network forward slash interfaces. We'll go over here and we will change the DHCP on the ETH zero line to static. Then we will give it an address uh, 192.168.12.2, a net mask of 255.255.255.0, and then a gateway of 192.168.12.1. I've used 254, I've used 1. There, there is no right or wrong way to do this. In some places I've been at use dot .10 for the, the gateway. It's all in what works best for you or whatever your standards happen to be. So we'll say yes to save, enter. Okay, so at this point, we will unplug from the production network. So I've just reached over and taken that little switch out. So we'll do sudo if down, 
ETH zero. Okay, now it's saying no such process. Okay, that's fine. Now, if we do a pseudo IF up ETH zero, now it should hang just a little bit like it did there. Now, if we do an IF config, now you can see that it's using the address that we configured. So we're almost there. So now we need to go through and edit the configuration file for the DHCP server. So we'll do a sudo space nano forward slash etc forward slash DHCP forward slash DHCPD.conf. All right. Now, one of the things that I normally will set on a DHCP server is a domain name so that if you're distinguishing your machines by a guest machine or your corporate machines that you can have those that are on the guest network come up with a different name some places I've been to don't even bother to set this so if you don't have any public facing systems then you probably don't have a domain name but in this case just to show that we are getting all the information we should from the different options then we'll go ahead and set that and with any of the options in here the pound sign will comment that out. Now, it shows you that references the DNS servers by name. I have always used the IP address. Again, it's whatever works best for you. And what we'll use in this case is 8.8.8.8 comma space 8.8.4.4 semicolon. Anything you do with configuration on the DHCP server from ISC, you'll need to have it in in a semicolon otherwise it's going to error out when it starts up because it's not going to understand what you're wanting to do and we'll use the pound sign and i'll put my first subnet declaration and then we will do a subnet of 192.168.12.0 net mask 255 255.255.255.0 space squiggle bracket I'm sure there's a proper name for that one. That's just the name that I've always referenced it by. And we'll de declare a range of 192.168.12. Now, I'm going to start with three since one has been reserved, in my case, for the default gateway, and two is the DHCP server. I'll start with three. Some places start at 10 for a production one. In this case, I'll do three because it's going to be a fairly small network. And then we'll specify the ending address so that will be 192.168.12.30 again semicolon now we've got to give it a default gateway so that will be option space routers space 192.168.12.1 semicolon now you can't have more than one default gateway so you would just simply do a comma space and then the the secondary one if you were going to do that and there's all sorts of options that you can specify with this and we'll do close squiggle on just to make it readable. I will just put a, a null line in there, empty line rather. So we'll do control X, Y, enter. Now we'll do a sudo service ISC dash DHCP server restart. And it didn't like what I did so let's go back in here and okay see there I made a mistake and it told you about it when it started up so I just did a server instead of servers had the example right in front of me so we'll save it and then by using the magic of the up arrow key we'll tell it to do a restart now because it had never started of course the stopping process failed now it did go ahead and not give us an error on startup so i will go ahead and plug in the cable and we'll do a tail dash f var log syslog now you see in the brief time it took to plug the cable in this is what you should see when everything is working correctly now it's going to say writing wrote zero leases to file that's normal you know, when it first starts up, especially when it has nothing to, to, to work from. Now, the first line is it's picking up that it's had a request. It figured out that it needed to try to assign 12.3. And then the MAC address is the one from my MacBook. 
and then ETH0 is, of course, the single Ethernet face on the Raspberry Pi. And then this is where it acknowledged back that information that, you know, MacBook said, okay, yes, I will go ahead and set that up. So what we'll go through now is to system preferences. And then we'll go to network. And I could have done this from terminal, but this way I can see everything all at once. And as you can see, it took the settings. It's got everything is right. DNS servers, domain name. So this, you know, gets you a quick uh, start to get one up and running. Very straightforward. So I uh, appreciate your time in watching this video and the accompanying information on the website. I will be working with some other things in the coming weeks, setting up a DNS server, setting up a web server, all of this as a part of the uh, path that we're on to see all the different ways that you can use a Raspberry Pi for a troubleshooting tool. The, you can see the rest of the series that I've done on my website at www.ronnutter.com. Thank you for watching.